This video is part of a series of video instructions on the BioGrace Greenhouse Gas Calculation Tool. This is instruction 2.1, Methodology of Greenhouse Gas Calculations, which will explain on the background and basics of the greenhouse gas calculations as performed with BioGrace. Actually, there are two BioGrace tools. There's BioGrace 1 for biofuels and BioGrace 2 for electricity, heat and cooling from biomass. This video instruction is about BioGrace 2. All information is accessible through www.biograce.net. In order to fully take profit from this video instruction and the ones that follow after this one, it is highly recommended that you understand the wording and requirements of the greenhouse gas calculation issues in the EC staff working document 259 with its full names listed here. The staff working document mainly describes elements that differ in the greenhouse gas calculation methodology for heat, electricity and cooling from solid and gaseous biomass compared to the corresponding methodology for biofuels or bioliquids in the Renewable Energy Directive RED. By the way, we expect Annex 5 of the RED to be updated in 2015 and after this update the methodology for biofuels or bioliquids might be exactly the same as the methodology for heat, electricity and cooling from solid and gaseous biomass. BioGrace has been built to comply with the greenhouse gas methodology as stated in the EC documents. We advise that you are familiar with the requirements from the EC documents and understand the meaning of the terms default value, typical value and actual value, land use change, allocation, electrical efficiency and fossil fuel comparator before you continue with the current and with the next video instructions. Other relevant legislative and informative documents are listed on this sheet which I will not explain in detail. These documents allow you to learn more about the terms just mentioned and on how greenhouse gas calculations for land use change are covered in the documents of the European Commission. For making actual greenhouse gas calculations, you need four things. A methodology, including detailed calculation rules, actual data from the final energy production process, numbers or coefficients to convert this data into greenhouse gas emissions, and data or numbers for the reference process. The methodology and the reference process will be dealt with in this video instruction. The other two topics come back in separate instructions. It is important to realize that making actual greenhouse gas calculations is a way of performing a life cycle analysis or LCA. LCA studies can be complicated and time-consuming, as often many aspects have to be taken into account. When defining the methodology, it was realized that it would not be feasible to require an extensive LCA analysis from all stakeholders in the bioenergy production chain. As a result, some pragmatic choices and simplifications were made as for instance the inclusion of default values and disaggregated default values. Another example of a pragmatic choice is that for greenhouse gas calculations under the staff working document it is not required to make an LCA study of the fossil fuel pathways, which is the reference scenario for the LCA analysis. Instead, predefined numbers called fossil fuel comparators can be used, to which I will come back in a moment. Please note that for bioliquids, this video instruction does not apply until Annex 5 of the RED has been updated. After the updated RED in Annex 5, this instruction will apply if the update causes 
the methodology for bioliquids to be the same as the methodology for solid and gaseous biomass. Until the LED Annex 5 has been updated, the methodology for bioliquids is explained in the BioQuest 1 video instruction 2.1. As for now, the bioliquid pathways follow the same methodology as the biofuel pathways. The methodology in a staff working document contains this formula to calculate the greenhouse gas emissions from solid and gaseous biomass. In this formula, the capital E represents the total emission from the use of the fuel before energy conversion. EEC, EP, ETD and EU are the four contributions to the total emission for which disaggregated default values have been defined. EEC is the emission from the extraction or cultivation of the raw materials. EP is the emission from processing. ETD, the emission from transport and distribution. And EU is the emission from the fuel in use, so due to final combustion. EL is the annualized emission from land use change and ESCA, the emission saving from soil carbon accumulation via improved agricultural management. Both can be calculated following the decision on carbon stocks, which is mentioned under point 5 in the previous slide, named relevant legislative and informative documents. Finally, ECCS and ECCR are the emission savings due to carbon capture and geological storage and carbon capture and replacement respectively. They are suddenly applied. An energy production pathway will look like this. Either a residue is used or a crop is cultivated for which sometimes land use change has occurred or for which improvements in the agricultural management have been made leading to carbon accumulation. Improved agricultural management has to be calculated at the cultivation stage. The harvested crop is processed. At various stages in the pathway, crops, intermediate products and end products are transported. In the calculation, we take the different contributions from cultivation together, as well as the different contributions from processing, transport and final combustion from the fuel in use. In the Biogris Excel tool, the result box looks like this. In this result box, you can identify the several contributions from EEC, EP, ETD, EU, EL and ESCA. Some important elements from the methodology as given in the staff working document are listed on this sheet. Many of them, like the energy and exergy based allocation of co-products and the bonus for biomass from degraded and heavily contaminated land, have been heavily discussed amongst LCA experts and policymakers. Being defined as they are in the European Commission documents, as listed in the first sheets of this presentation, they provide the basis for making actual greenhouse gas calculations. Nevertheless, there are more detailed issues that have not been defined. Therefore, Biograce has developed a set of calculation rules that are the subject of a separate video instruction. How emissions are being divided between different co-products has a large impact on the final result of a life cycle analysis of a fuel, or as in this case, final energy. When making greenhouse gas calculations, the allocation method is therefore crucial to the result. The methodology for greenhouse gas calculations of biofuels in the RED 
uses energy allocation based on the lower heating value of the co-products. Since heat does not have a lower heating value, the RED methodology could not be used without adaptation for greenhouse gas calculations of heat, electricity and cooling. When heat is co-produced with other energy commodities, exergy has now been chosen as the basis for the allocation instead of energy. Exergy is only used as allocation method when heat at different temperatures is produced and when heat is co-produced with electricity. Please note that when cooling is produced, no allocation is applied but only a further conversion of heat. This means that the first step can be an exergy allocation if both heat and electricity are produced and the second step is a conversion of heat into cooling based on a certain efficiency. The staff working document methodology contains some specific rules for biogas. As for co-digestion, the mass balance rule does not apply. And for manure, a credit for improved manure management applies. In case of co-digestion of manure, bio-waste and or maize silage, default values can be calculated for the mixture of substrates. Please note that in case other substrates than maize, wet manure and bio-waste are co-digested, an actual calculation of the emissions per megajoule biogas shall be performed. Based on these methodological aspects for biogas, two specific biogas sheets have been included in the Biogas 2 Excel tool, which helps stakeholders making greenhouse gas calculations for co-digestion. The last topic of the present video instruction is that of the reference process. There were several decisions taken by the Commission in order to define the fossil fuel comparators, FFCs. Finally, four EU-wide fossil fuel comparators for different energy carriers were set. The following values for the FFCs were defined. Electricity, 186 CO2 equivalent per megajoule. Heat, 80 grams CO2 equivalent per megajoule. Natural gas, 72 grams CO2 equivalent per megajoule. And cooling, 47 grams CO2 equivalent per megajoule. In the case of co-production, the emissions are allocated to the different energy commodities before the comparison with the FFCs. Due to the progressive decarbonization of the energy sector, the greenhouse gas emissions that are valid today may decrease in the future. Therefore, the FFCs have been based on technologies that will be built in the absence of energy and climate policies, which is the so-called marginal approach. Details on this approach can be found in Box 2 in the 2014 Staff Working Document 259.